Etia is a French-based company leader in pyrolysis since nearly 20 years. Thanks to its unique and flexible technology, Spirayule. Beyond technology, Etia is bringing a complete solution to its client. To recycle plastics into new, high added value chemical products. The management explains how Etia reinvents plastic beyond the oil and gas industry. Uh, Olivia, you are the president and co-founder. Uh, tell us, what is Etia? Actually, Etia, it's an innovative company that we have created 30 years ago uh, with one of my colleagues. And uh, from that time, uh, the main activity of the company was to develop innovative solutions. I'm very happy to see that after 30 years, it's still the DNA of the company. Okay, but with innovation, um, what are your main drives for this long experience in the market? Uh, I would say that for us, innovation means not only to provide solutions for functional needs, but also to provide solutions that move society one step ahead. Mm -hmm. What was the first technology uh, that you started with? I would say that our most disruptive technology is named Spirajoule. This is an electrical heating screw conveyor. And uh, with kind of humor, we like to say that Archimedes has invented the screw. But it yeah, has uh, invented the fact that we can plug the screw directly on an electrical current to heat up the product during transportation. Because we can control very precisely the temp temperature and time. Uh, our first market was actually the sterilization of spices and herbs. And uh, I would say that uh, even today, we are still the world leader in this uh, activity uh, with probably more than 90 uh, units installed in uh, roughly 40 countries. Philip, you are the deputy general manager. Uh, being so deep in the food uh, business, how did you make it uh, to where you are now? Uh, actually, in 2003, uh, we decided uh, to uh, uh, change our te spiritual technology towards spirosis process to transform biomass into bioproduct and renewable energy. So to do that, we mainly increase the temperature of the spiritual, and we call that the biogreen. And our first client was a client that wanted to transform sawdust into a liquid aromas. And this first unit is still running 17 years after. So after that, there, are, there were a lot of different uh, uh, steps towards different kinds of sea stock, like biomass, RDF, sludges, and of course, uh, plastics. But at the end, the key element is not only the technology, it is mainly the business model. Okay, what, what do you mean by that? Uh, I mean that uh, we are able to manage different kind of feedstocks, but also we can run at a wide range of uh, temperature and residence time. And um, in pure disease, when you change the operational conditions, uh, you can create different phases of solid, liquid, and gas. And the ratio between these different phases will depend mainly on these operational conditions. For the biogreen, we can go from 300 degrees Celsius up to more than 1,000 degrees Celsius. So this helps us to choose the right parameters to fit the right needs of the clients to optimize the value at the end. Mm -hmm. One of the main milestones, I would say, that during this uh, last 30 years was uh, 2019 when uh, we were acquired by Vo, uh, which is a listed company uh, in Oslo, in Norway. Uh, that happened in uh, last October 2019. And this is uh, a huge uh, development for us. I would say that Vo, with a ScanShip subsidiary, is already a world leader in a waste treatment solution for cruise ship industry. Um, I can say that more or less we are one or so of the first leaders in uh, providing technology and pure disease solution for, for, for waste on land. So I would say that our ambition for the, for the group is really to be the leader in a pure disease solution to deliver a waste treatment solution on ocean and on land. Uh, we are doing uh, pure disease and waste treatment with many kinds of feedstock. I would say that, of course, uh, biomass is one of the feedstock that can, is probably the only feedstock that can deliver renewables. But uh, plastic is probably the main source of waste that can deliver 
substitution product and energy from uh, fossil waste, such as we can produce carbon black, we can produce syngas, we can produce methane, we can produce hydrogen for the same feedstock. And that's very, very important. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia and Philippe. Uh, they will both join me uh, back here in the studio in a little while. But for now, I would like to ask Tristan, the industrial director of Etia, to join me. Hi, Tristan. Uh, you work with the thermal conversion process. What happens when you heat the material? Uh, wouldn't it be burning? So what happens in pyrolysis is not burning. Uh, we uh, do not add any uh, oxygen during the process. Uh, with a pyrolysis, um, we um, uh, only use the heat to transform the um, uh, waste into other molecules. That's why we use to call the pyrolysis process chemical uh, recycling. Can you tell us a little bit more? Can you explain how the technology works? So, biogreen technology is a continuous process, meaning that the production can be continuous without any interruption of uh, the flow of product uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Biogreen uh, is usually composed of several bricks. So the first brick is the uh, uh, fit, feedstock upper uh, with a dosing screw. The second one is a pyrolysis uh, reactor. The third one is a uh, shark cooling uh, system. And the fourth one is a syngas uh, extraction system. So uh, depending on the uh, feedstock quality and the uh, business model, we need to design uh, all the bricks to reach the uh, performance, the good performance, the uh, optimized configura configuration to, to manage to reach the good uh, oil production, methane production, and hydrogen production. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Tristan. Anna, you are the commercial and marketing director of Etia. Um, hi. Do you see any concerns uh, with your customers and the fact that your biogreen process is using electricity? You know, it's, it's actually a great question because uh, in the past we have always been under a great scrutiny because of using the electricity as a main heating source. But now we see that during this time, uh, during the recent time, it is very much changing because there is more and more presence of uh, renewables in the grid. So all the future is heading electric. So now many of our customers are actually requesting the system to be powered by electricity because it can offer them an entirely fossil free treatment. We are in a quite unique position uh, because we've been working with the pyrolysis since uh, so many years uh, and that uh, takes us to the place where we have accumulated a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, a big expertise and it's very important for the successful business. Uh, so today in our group we have uh, around 140 very skilled people which are focused on uh, R&D, industrialization, engineering, manufacturing services and, uh, you know, when we speak about R&D, uh, today 80% of uh, what we are doing in R&D is actually not the pyrolysis reactor itself, because the pyrolysis have been already developed over 15 years ago. In the development now, what we focus on is uh, new applications, new business models to create a value for the client and to create a positive impact for the environment and for the society. So thanks to this and thanks to this approach, we have installed around uh, 50 pyrolysis units all over the world, which are operating on a different types of feedstocks, biomass, residues, plastic waste, RDF, and so on. But how is all of this a step forward for plastic recycling? Our clients who are uh, waste managers, waste recyclers, collectors, food and beverage packagers, they very often look for a solution that is able to deal with this variety. And, and, and our approach is to focus on plastics which are not recyclable by mechanical means. So we call it a chemical recycling that we are doing. Uh, it's not a mechanical recycling. So in this area, what uh, really gives us a very big strength is that we are a turnkey solution provider which can build the technology uh, and create it accordingly to the demand and to the need of the client. The business model, I assume, is therefore very essential. Uh, what would you say um, are the main parameters to get a profitable project? At the end of the day, with everything that we do, it is about the value that we can bring to the client and about the positive impact that we can make to the environment. And these are the two that we are really willing to maximize. 
So in order to choose the projects where we can be the most meaningful, we need to really pay attention not only to the technical part, but also to the economical constraints. So we need to be very vigilant towards the factors such as the price of the plastics or a gate fee of plastics, necessary preparation, economy of scale, logistics of the client, logistics of the offtake, because all these factors will really create a successful project. Thank you very much, Anna and Ashla. Um, we would like to uh, wrap this up the way we started. Philippe and Olivier, please join me here once again in the studio at your headquarters where a lot of work is going on. Um, Philippe, what are the new projects that you are working on when it comes to plastics? Uh, we are working on a lot of different projects and in particular we are working on a project with a French waste uh, manager, which is named uh, Simevad, and the objective of this project is de to demonstrate the technical and economic interest of producing hydrogen and carbon from plastics that are not recyclable with the classic uh, uh, technologies. Why would you want to produce hydrogen coming from plastics? Actually, uh, um, plastic is a mix of hydrogen and, uh, and carbon. And so producing hydrogen from plastic is a way to come back to the original uh, molecules. Uh, to do that, we need to eat at a very high temperature, more than 1,000 degrees Celsius. And the beauty of that is that the hydrogen that you will produce uh, can be a raw material for chemical industries or a very low carbon uh, energy carrier. And on top of that, you have some carbon as a solid, that is a carbon sink that can be used for different uh, industrial products. Okay, do you work on uh, other applications? Uh, yes, uh, because uh, as we are very flexible with the same feedstock, we can change the operational uh, conditions and we can, for instance, uh, produce mainly some uh, oil. And uh, we can see in the market right now, there is more and more interest for, for this uh, way, mainly from the oil and gas industry. Uh, Olivier, I think uh, the viewers and I might be wondering, do you have some plastic units running? Yes, actually we are uh, developing a demo unit. Uh, close to Paris in Normandy, uh, where the objective is uh, another business model. Uh, we have uh, spoke about business model to produce hydrogen from, pla from, uh, from plastic, uh, to produce methane from plastic, but we can also turn plastic into electricity. And this is a very useful application and business model. Maybe not for Europe, because we know that price of electricity is quite cheap, but in coastal cities or, or island where they have two problems. One is big quantity of plastic waste. Second is high price for electricity. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we are doing is turning plastic into syn gas, then burning the gas into an engine to produce electricity. So I, if I understand it correctly, solving plastic pollution is actually at the core of your mission, isn't it? Of course, we want to, uh, to limit the, the, the plastic pollution in ocean and on land. But what to do is to limit but not to eliminate the plastic, but we really want to use plastic uh, as a raw material to provide other molecules. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we do that, we can avoid the utilization of uh, fossil material, uh, native fossil material, and then we avoid CO2 emission as well. If you were to uh, give the audience one last sentence, why Etia? Well, uh, I would say that uh, just because we want simply uh, reinvent uh, oil and gas industry.